All right, guys, so this is going to show you a tutorial on how to create an animated GIF in Photoshop. OK, so I have Photoshop running right here and I've opened up a student's uh, 2D character. So um, I'm borrowing Gerard's here. He did a great job on it. OK, so we are going to animate the colors in your actual 2D character. OK, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to notice that uh, Gerard had a lot of layers. Um, I went ahead and flattened it. So became one image. So what you can do is you can click in your layers panel on the right hand side and you'll have all those layers here. You can go to the hamburger stack and you're going to go down to something called flatten image. You can click on that. Okay. And then it'll become one sheet of paper. Okay. One layer. Then I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go save as and I'm going to save it in my folder with my name on it. Um, and I'm going to make sure it's a Photoshop file. I'm going to call it animation. Okay. I'm going to put animation. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead, leave it as a Photoshop file and hit save. All right. So now I have this thing with just one set of colors here. Um, you're going to notice down here at the bottom. Wow. Miss Miller has this thing down here that was not here before. I'm going to show you where you're going to find it's called your timeline window. Go down to timeline and that will cause this timeline to pop up. You can adjust the placement of your timeline, how much space it takes on your screen by left clicking and dragging. See how I can move it up and down the size because it might pop up really big and then you're like, whoa, so bring it down here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a frame animation. Okay. So here's one of the things I like to make you aware of. If you hit the hamburger stack in your timeline, there are some options right here um, that later on we're going to use. But I just for now, that's there. Um, and we'll go back to that after we start creating it into an animation. Down here, there is a button. OK, when I click on the little carrot here, there's video timeline and there's frame animation. We're doing frame animation because all we're going to do is change out colors. OK, create frame animation and then left click on that button frame one in your timeline. OK, so down here at the bottom, these are some timeline settings. First one switches it from frame to frame animation to a video, but we're going to not click on that. Um, looping it, we want it to play forever so that when we preview it, we can see it go on and on and on because that's how an animated GIF would be. These are your settings for like playing, moving to the beginning or to the end of the timeline. The next button is for tweening. Um, we're not going to use that in this animation, but we will use it later on. And then there's a new frame. So this is a single frame. OK, down here at the bottom, you'll see zero seconds. This is your delay. You can left click on it and choose what type of delay. And that's like a pause in between frames. OK, so the way this works is we see what's on frame one because that's what's showing because there's an eyeball. If I hide that, I left. Well, let me uncheck this. And then I hide this. See, it disappears. So whatever is on this frame, it's whatever the eyeball is showing. OK, so now what I want to do is I want to add another frame because if you have only one frame, it's not really an animation. So let's go ahead and click this icon here to add a new frame. And what it does, it duplicates it. OK, so here now let's talk about the hamburger stack right here. All right, so if you add a new layer, and you want it to appear because we're going to change what you see by making another layer. So you can check mark that you want the new layers to appear on every single frame. It, by default, this will be check mark. So if I click that, it will have a check mark there. I want you to uncheck it because in most cases, when you're starting out, it gets really confusing if this is check mark you'll get confused because you're like, why is this on every single frame? I just wanted it to show up on frame two or three. So I'm going to uncheck this. All right. So now it's only going to show whatever you have here. It's not going to, if you make a new layer, it's not going to automatically pop up. But now I'm going to duplicate this layer. I can either right click and I can duplicate layer or I can hit control J or command J on Mac. Boom, made a copy. Now it's the identical same thing. So 
here's the thing. This one covers up this, so what you're really seeing is the top one. I'm going to hide layer zero. And you know what? I'm going to start labeling these two. It gets a, very confusing. So when I click on frame one, I see, do you see how the eyeball is missing on that one? But it's showing on this one. I'm going to call this, <coughs> you could just even call it one. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to go to two, go double click on the, the layer's name, call it two. All right. So to get started with it, this is showing on frame two. Okay. So frame two, I want to just change one of the colors because it's going to be animated based on color. Not that anything's moving. The color is going to animate. So I've got this swatches panel. If you don't see it, it's this icon that looks like a Rubik's Cube or you can go to Window and I could actually select swatches. And then once it's checkmarked, this flies out. You also have your set foreground color. So if you don't want to use these default colors, you can click left click on that and I could move it to whatever color I want and then I could scroll up. Now I want the sky to be a seafoam green color. So I'm going to go with that and hit OK. So that is loaded in my foreground, set foreground color. Then I'm going to use my paint bucket tool. And now, you know what? I want it to be in the sky. So because this is bound off, that Geron actually closed it off as a shape, I should be able to left click on it and should just fill that area. Ooh, he didn't quite close it off. There's probably a little hole right here. So if I zoom in, control plus, or I can scroll wheel, there's somewhere there's a hole. Ah, look at that. There's a hole. So I'm going to hit the I on my keyboard for eyedropper, hit B for my brush, and then I'm going to look at my brush here. And those are my brush presets. This is my regular brush. Oh, here's my general brushes. I'm looking for the hard round brush. Boom, there we go. And then I'm just gonna paint that in and I wanna make sure my opacity is up to 100. That's great. Okay, so now I can just paint that in and fix that. So you had a little bit of a gap. Boom. All right, so now I should be able to use my paint bucket tool. I'm gonna go back to the seafoam green. Boom, boom. Hit OK. Then I'm going to left click in there. I'm going to left click in these areas because I want to change. I want it to look like it flashes to this color. So I'm going to even zoom in, Control plus plus, or I can hit Alt and scroll wheel in. Boom. There we go. All right. So I've got that now. So here's the thing. When we play this, I go to frame one and then I play it. That's how you get that flashing, because what it's doing is it's playing those frames back and forth very quickly. Our eyes perceive it as a flashing, a change of color, because it's actually, you know, what would be really, you know, because it's going so quickly. What would be really cool is if you gradually adjust the color, and this is what I want you to do. You're going to gradually, frame by frame, start changing these colors, so then it becomes a new drawing. Okay, so I'm going to hit the space bar. It stops the playing. Okay, now frame two is showing here. I've changed the color of the sky. So you got to keep track of what you've changed, what you haven't. I mean, then I'm going to hit new frame. Click on that. All right, frame two showing. Hit control J or command J on a Mac. Boom. I will hide frame two and I'm going to call this three. Okay, then I'm going to change something else. Okay, so, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this yellow to a different color. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to use, and this is good practice because then you're going to know how to change colors. So this is why we're doing it. Hit OK because I like this purple blue and I'm going to left click in there and I'm going to left click in there. See, now that's changing. Now, let's see what happens when we play this. Woo! Some crazy psychedelic SpongeBob. So I'm going to pause this. Okay. So the reason why this is happening, frame three is playing on three. So add a new frame, step one. Step two, duplicate it on the layer. Control J or Command J on a Mac. Hide the previous layer because I only want that frame on the top showing. Rename it to match the frame you're on. And then I'm going to change the color to something else. I'm going to click on that. Or I could use my swatches. Like I said, how about we go for a swatch? 
let's actually make SpongeBob the yellow he's supposed to be. So I'm going to click in here. Boom. And I think that's about right. I'm trying to remember. Maybe his sleeves? I can't remember, but we'll just go with that. And maybe his hands. Yeah. Make sure that's there you go. So now frame four is on um, layer four is on frame four. Now I'm gonna click on that. You could hit like if I'm here, I can click on that, it'll bump it to the beginning. Now hit the play. So it's repeatedly going through and cycling through, and you're gonna create like a flashing um, GIF animation. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this. Now, how do I export this? Because this file is native to Photoshop because it's a Photoshop file. What I want it to be readable is in a web browser, or maybe I wanna upload it to say Facebook or something like that. I don't think it works on Instagram, but it does work on Facebook if you're doing a GIF or a GIF. I call it a GIF. So, um, and you can also add it to a web browser. So here's what we can do. We can go to File. We're gonna go to Export. Then you're gonna go, once you've done all your color changes, this is the last thing. And make sure you're saving. Hit Control S or Command S on a Mac. Um, go to File in the menu, go to Export, and then we are going to do Render Video. We click on Render Video. This new menu will pop up. Takes it a little bit of while to think about it. I should have paused the video. Oh well. Anyway, so. It's going to think about it. And so rendering is basically taking all of your frames and putting them in them into a file format, which is going to be an MP4 or a GIF. Okay. So this is for video. Okay. So for Instagram, you would render video. Okay. So I apologize. I meant to show you the animated GIF route, but I will show that too. So this is for MP4. So this is readable by Instagram and also by Facebook. The blue here, right here, that's highlighted, that's the file's name. And you know what? I would call it final. And I would put my name at the end of it so we know whose is whose. I'm going to select what folder because by default it's going on my desktop. And that is, I would like you to put it in the folder that you've created to put all your files together. Okay, so you can choose which folder it goes to. I'm going to hit cancel. This right here is going to be fine. I'm going to leave as is. And then I would hit the render. Okay, so this is going to be a video file format. Okay, readable by Adobe Premiere, iMovie, YouTube, that kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to hit cancel. You would hit the render button and I would render it out and then it's going to pop up to where you're saving it. I'm going to cancel this. Now, to save it as an animated GIF, you go to file, go to export, and we're going to we're going to go to the Save for Web Legacy. When you go to this, and once again, my computer's a little slow. Okay, so this is huge, but this gives me a preview in this window how big this is. I'm going to dial the size now. We're going to do 700. I'm going to click, I'll click, and it has to think about it. So now I've got the file here. It's taking all of those frames. And I'm going to put them into this GIF format. You want to make sure it's this. If you do any of these other options, it's not going to work. Um, these options here tell you how many like colors, basically, because if I dial it down, see the colors change. It restricts it. But I will leave it at the um, 128, the default. Okay, It's a little bit smoother for the color. So the biggest thing you're going to worry about is image size. It's way too big. Um, we might actually make it like, let's see. 600? Let's see if I did 600. Let's see how much smaller that gets. I think I like the 600. I think that's a good size. 600 is a good size, okay? Then you're going to see the percentage it's being reduced by. We want to keep the quality by cubic. We want it to loop forever. I mean, you could just have it play once, but that wouldn't be much of an animated GIF. And these are really fun that you can post them like on a site like Giphy. Uh, I think that's the one um, my students one year, they love that thing. But anyways, it has a lot of different kinds of different GIF animations. So everything else is fine. And then I'm going to hit the save button. 
Then it's going to ask me where do I want to save it. I want to put it in that folder. I'm going to call this final. I'm going to put my name on it. Then I'm going to click that it goes into the folder. You would find the folder and then you hit save. Okay, so it doesn't take as long for this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my web browser. Okay, I'm going to make a new tab. So the great thing is, see, here it is, drag it into the window, and it plays. So now I have an animation that's flashing with color. Okay, this can be posted on a website. You can upload it to Facebook. Um, we can also put this on your website for your portfolio because it's a it's a gif file it reads it like it's an image but then it's shooting through those frames okay so you don't need any kind of the nice thing you don't need like any software you don't need anything special to play it, it just automatically does in your web browser so we're gonna put these on your Weebly on your portfolios because this is gonna be like your first animation project that you're gonna post and so this is something you'll be able to share but that is how you created an animated um, GIF. How do you export it file format? And how do you use your timeline? So you're bre being graded on all these things. But the GIF fi file format at 600, that's what I'm looking for. All right. So thanks for watching.